top three lyricists in the game right now. Wow, that's pretty underrated. Underrated rapper. He's deep lyrical, deserves much more praise than he gets. into writing and creative storytelling and stuff like that. I always been good with words, they say. You know, I'd be the one who was writing like poems in middle school and like high school, like because you had to. I just write. I was very good at conveying like how I felt, you know? I always thought he was unmatched lyrically. You know what I'm saying? Like, anytime he went over a track that was more so lyrical based, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't require too much, no frills, no chorus shit. He could just spit th straight through and show skill. I mean, he was at the top of the game with that. Afford a dodge or afford where she end up on your knob because she has never been adored. Lord, help us, my generation, cut to an end. Because we all selfish but living shallow. How we gonna swim? His ability to take something from A and mix it with Z from left field and put them together so you can actually relate to it and say, hmm, I never thought about that. Or he'll say something that makes you want to research it. Wale is somebody that's going to make you be like, let me go get my dictionary real quick. Hold on, let me go look at, let me go, what movie is that from? When I just heard him for the first time, I, I automatically picked up on his wit. The way he raps and the things he's rapping about, it's kind of witty, it makes you start, you, when you listen to it, yeah, like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. What did he just say? I kind of feel like she's slightly bizarre. Sabotage all the time, having me avatar. Blue, who fought mine only because it's thick around. She leave before the sun, I'm leaving something to think about. He was ambitious with his flow. You know, there weren't a lot of other rappers trying to harken back to, you know, some of the original, you know, smooth spitters like Big Daddy Kane and Cool G Rap. Never hit them all if I ever get it all. Any bra better layer like I'm dressing for the fall, nigga. And I'm all that. Hit the passage of dope. Shawty was pink. Once I got in the studio with him the first time and we recorded three or four records that night, I knew that he was a, a prolific writer. I realized his skills of poetry. I feel like he can rap on anything. I feel like he can, he can uh, integrate his music with any sound as he's already done. Um, and, and something like that in this industry is dangerous because people want to see how versatile you are as an artist. And I think, I, I actually strongly believe Wale is the definition of a versatile artist. Bad girls ain't no good. And the good girls ain't no fun. Look. And the bad girls want a real nigga. Yeah, because real niggas just want. So it seems that we His music was a lot different than the music I had been hearing here in D.C. He's not just trying to say, yo, I'm going to put out this project and boom, and we're just going to be rich. He said, no. Day one, I want to be the best, and I want to make a, I want to make a point. You know, he wanted to make a point in hip hop, and I think he's successfully doing that. Bras gonna follow. Follow, 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 follow. Young people, your own companion. The autopsy just shows that the deaths are only days ago, in broad daylight, a policeman was shot dead. And just because of what we represent or what they think we represent. I grew up in the Reaganomics era in D.C. The excessive violence and all of that, I wasn't directly influenced by any of that lifestyle until I moved to middle class, quote unquote, black suburban. I never really saw like drug dealers like every day, you know what I'm saying, until I moved to Maryland. But you know, I, I, I kind of consider it as a whole 
area, you know what I'm saying? Like, the distance in which I was moving around wasn't probably more than, like, a 15-mile radius. While they folks from Alwick, Almore, Landover, you know what I'm saying? Glen Arden area, around that area, like, it's not sweet. So he had his connection to the streets. He was around it, just not hit. He was not involved. D.C., man, it's, it's a rough, rough city, man, especially in, in terms of, you know, getting into music and all that stuff. Overall, it's a crab in a barrel mentality, like, it's such a, like, gangster town, like, between Baltimore and D.C., like, it's the home of Rayford Evans, the crack wave, the heroin wave. The line between wealth and poverty is crazy. You can look into the low-income family's front porch from, like, the high rises. It's easy to get confused because it has the monument and the White House and the Capitol and all of these glorious things that you're able to read about in, in history books and things like that. But then four blocks away from the Capitol is the hood. Here's more set, your neighborhood. Yo, this neighborhood versus this neighborhood. So that mentality just is in the people, you know what I'm saying? It's self-destructive. Where you come from is really hard to break as an artist. They really, they don't really support their up and coming artists like they should. It's not too many people willing to be a part of a team and bring something up. You know, I go out to shows and you know DC will rep everybody else, but when it comes to somebody at home, it's like pulling teeth. Wale, well, well, oh no, nah, I'm the hottest rapper out in the DMV right now. I'm not sure where the mentality came from, you know, and it's not something I ever really subscribe to, but. It's, it's there, and you know what I'm saying? It definitely makes it a lot, a lot harder for anybody to succeed. It's tough. It's tough, because most of us, this is all we know. Not many of us artists that's in DC makes it. Ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? Sad to say, but I ain't going nowhere. To hear Crabs in the Barrel and to hear Hate is the New Love repeated so much, um, and to go back all the way to you know, the 60s. For example, Go-Go has been rooted in DC for a long time. New York hip hop artists took elements of Go-Go when they first started hip hop in 77, 78. Not saying that they stole it, but it wasn't necessarily credited to DC artists. Go-Go party. Lots of movement, lots of shaking, lots of jiggling, lots of noise. It's not your normal party. It's like, it's like a rave with black people. That's, that's Gugga. They really be dancing, going crazy. Like, it's like seven, eight in the morning. It's like the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. It's just like funk music, but like, funkier. <laughs> you know, it's just like a more of a heavy percussion bass musical. My whole career, I've been trying to just describe what it sounds like. But it's like trying to tell what a blind man what orange looks like. Go-Go just hasn't made it nationwide or top 40 like rap did. And I think a lot of the people here are still concentrated on Go-Go instead of rap. It's DC, man. Like, Go-Go is like the essence of the city. You know what I'm saying? You could bring little Boosie or whoever for a team party. Them kids is not going. You could have bought little Wayne out this motherfucker. Them kids is not going. They're going to see TCB, Backyard, XIB, they don't even want to see rappers. It's like that. After promoting, after a few years, I started understanding the worth of what Gogo was to DC. To Wale, Gogo is like his lungs. Gogo is that breath of fresh air that keeps his music fresh. He's actually the first cat, like, to actually rap and do the go-go together. He most definitely made that clear how much DC, the DMV, and go-go meant to his music. I think with the earlier mixtapes like Paint a Picture, you know, obviously there was the go-go influence, and I think that was important to set that tone first, right? To know that he was conscious of the area and, and the, the genre that really was birthed here, which is go-go music. That's, you know, my sound. Like, I, that's always gonna be a part of my sound. Like, I want when people to hear them drums, I want them to think of me, you know? That's the best way I know how to represent. My, my stage presence comes from playing with go-go bands, like, from 
senior year of high school to all the way till I got a record deal. DC was really in his heart and soul. You know, that's what that's what he grew up on. That's what he believed in. That's what he saw as his opportunity to 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 tweak musically and to deliver to the world. And that that you know, Dig Dug was the first one to catch wave. That's my name. Don't forget it's not a game. Hold your name, cause my thing's something. It was go-go enough, but it was also mainstream enough at the same time. And it was that perfect balance. My name Wale, don't forget it, you know? That joint, like, it was rocking. I was in the club. That joint was turned up. Niggas was actually singing the track. The first record that got played on radio around here was, was Dig Dug, um, produced by Southeast Slim, who really wanted to challenge himself by sampling a go-go record and proving that hip hop could incorporate, you know, DC genre. DC didn't really have rappers like that. And when I started listening to him on stage, I said, man, this, this, this guy right here is something special. And he had his own little, like I said, he had his own little swag versus what I seen here in DC. Didn't have just a straight go-go feel. It was the right time. Like, it was perfect timing. In terms of like the street culture and fashion and whatnot, you know, it was at a turning point where it was commercialized. And he was at the forefront of that because a lot of his content had to do with that. Just like how people say Rakim started that uh, mechanical flow, the bars, the X, Y, Z. Wale kind of pioneered the sneakerhead, the SB. I'm rapping about being a regular guy from Maryland, from DC, going through what I go through. Nobody did that. He gave niggas a lane. Now, you see all these shops kick spots, niggas copping the retros, the fashion, everything. That's another side to the DMV. He gave that side life. He ain't talking about no gang shit. Right. He ain't talking about no street shit. Damn, you hear this? I don't, I don't be hearing, you don't be hearing down. rappers like, you don't really hear too many rappers from our area that actually like focus on hip hop. But then you had somebody that was coming and was actually being artistic and creative with just hip hop, hip -hop. and hip hop culture. Right. That was like a breath of fresh air for us. It's not so much about the same commonality of um, I broke down bricks and uh, I shot up the block and, and I'm riding through in the Maybox. So, you know, it's just, it's things that you say, okay, I could kind of associate myself with by itself and, 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 and kind of fun. I mean, he's making love songs. You know, he's making songs about sneakers. He's making songs about DC. He's got a little bit of everything to offer. And it's, it's not, he's not a one lane type of artist. To be gravitated towards his music and to relate to it and to say that, yo, this guy is really talking about everyday stuff, but in a more clever way. I was like, yo, this dude really has vision. Like, he knows what he, where he's going. You know, a lot of, lot of, lot of artists are like caricatures of like people or things or like combination of something they might have saw on TV. You stuck with it, but like if you really look down, like, and like the, the grand scheme of all we got, like I'm, I'm, I kind of embody most people. And it gave kids that coming from the ghetto, coming from Section Eight, coming from poverty, wherever they come from, they gave them somebody to represent them. They could be different. And, that, and I feel like that was the greatest gift that Wale could have ever gave to the DMV. Get lost in the ice in the bag of mine, she won't call me tonight. And after when she decides to go home, I call, she said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm blown now, but I'll be okay. K-O-D with like P-O-K, hold some D-O-A. Give a D on D, O-D on bread, she could be on safe. Like He always had a gift, like he was always a lyricist. And I don't think a lot of people really realized how dope he was. And I think like with the, the Rick Ross co-sign, I think people kind of more so open their eyes to his music. Maybach music. Collaborating with an artist that may be in a, another vein and may be on different topics, may represent another crowd and make, you know, timeless records. And that's what it was all about. What a total blowing bomb haze. I just tell CJ, keep on rolling, that's my shorty. Send it out, you ain't seeing through all black, everything. It's like, like a HBCU. When he signed with MMG, he took a lot of backlash from all his fans because they felt like he was changing his music 
but he really wasn't. He was still making the same kind of records he always made in the past. To the average consumer that listen to rap music, they're like, well, why would Ross, you know, attach himself to Wale out of all the rappers that are out right now? So it was a sense of curiosity. He really wanted to show people, like, hey, you know, I'm not changing my sound. I'm still Wale, the artist, but I'm just with Maybach music. Ever, forever my endeavors, and I sever my opponents. I'm cold like it's in Denver, the dilemma is. You think I got no conscience. You think I'm just a floss and I'm all about conscience. I got to keep this. Bro, I, that's why I sound with Ross. Because he's like, you can do whatever you want. It's time for us to take it to the next level. And let's outwork everybody. And let's let the work speak for itself. The kind of music he makes, nobody's really doing it. Like, it's, you could tell, like, when you hear a Wale record these days, you know it's a Wale record. I told myself, yo, this is something that's most definitely special. No matter what road you take, there are going to be challenges. And the real challenges are how the media portrays you. When Twitter first came out, you know, a lot of people thought they could be tough on Twitter. Uh, and they would take shots at Wale just because he had that success. He's very passionate. And when you're passionate about something that you believe in or you're passionate about your body of work, you accept criticism, but then you want to defend it. And sometimes your defense can be mistaken. Everybody got a voice. You know what I'm saying? So it's like now it's it's magnified to another degree to where really there was a certain time where you wouldn't even see half the shit these people are saying. So you ain't really have to deal with it. He reads everything, every like positive thing, every negative thing. And like it, it, the negative stuff that like, gets to him. A lot of people get frustrated when when somebody doesn't understand your vision or they don't understand the point you're trying to make or you know, the idea that you have, it can be frustrating. Some reason, it's like corny to talk about how you feel in rap. We supposed to be the realest niggas on the planet. Rappers, right? So why is it so frowned upon for speaking your mind? Wale mentality was like, you know, I'm putting on for the city. I'm trying to bring these motherfuckers up, but all these niggas hating on me. Like, so he got to be defensive. You know what I'm saying? He's on the defense. Like, niggas really wasn't understanding at first what I was trying to do. And it still ain't for real, but it was really ugly at one point. It was real ugly. It gets to them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, most artists think put they all into everything that they do. And for somebody to come and try to take that down or tear that down or cut it apart or whatever, you know what I'm saying? You're going to feel some type of way about it. Internet is where the most evil people dwell. That's where the trolls live. Like, the people that, is, that all they, they don't have nothing good to say about nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. Of course, like, you're going to have a... But I have, like, a cult following of haters, though. Like, my haters be passionate. A lot of the stuff that people criticize or his adversities come from aren't even serious, you know? Uh, people, you know, especially in today's social media, people bash just for attention. And if you're passionate about your record and you just drop the album that you work 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 months for, and you get a wave of people that's just bad, right? You have to defend that record. It gets frustrated to, to, to somebody like that's been in the um, business as long as he has, because I don't think he get enough credit for what, you know, for what he brings to the game. If everybody keeps saying I'm underrated, like, that's like scary. That makes that makes me feel like it's going to be like that. Like, for the rest of my career, I'm just going to be that dude that just fan favorite underrated. Like, I mean, if that's, if that's what Destiny has in line for me, then cool, but like, it scares me to think like, yo, y'all, why? Let's stop the underrated. What's going? What's what's got to happen for me to be accepted as, you know, that level that I'm that I'm aiming for? You can dislike them all you want. At the end of the day, I don't know too many people that work that hard. I just need a, a better drum pattern on the verses. 88. After that, Rocky Five. Give me the beat real quick. Let me finish my verse. And in any arena, I really think if you do work hard enough, you'll get to where you want to. But you meet a lot of people just just talk. You know what I'm saying? They're infatuated with the outskirts, but they don't really know how how hard you got to work to get there. He wears his heart on his shoulder. You understand? Wale is passionate. You know, when other artists may just um, keep their feelings to themselves, may have something on their mind and just, you know, hold it. Wale going to give it to you. And I think that's needed. 
Wale, man, he worked hard. He worked harder than probably a lot of other artists. When I mean, I mean, like, like the boy don't have no normal life. If he not on no stage or he not in no studio, he don't even know what to do with himself. It's almost like weird, cause that's like I get a I get a sick little like kick out of like grinding now. It's like going to the weight room. Like you know how niggas just they get a little bit of muscles and they just can't stop. I'm like that. Like one of my favorite days I've had in recent memories having like access to two studios at one time. That's sick. That's like a nigga like a nigga happy that he when he worked nine to five and five to nine back. That's like crazy. But I just, for some reason, I enjoyed it. When he wants to do something, like, he puts his all into it. Him being a perfectionist just shows how real of a person he is. He's not satisfied. He's going to keep working hard, though. You know what I'm saying? He's going to continue to work hard until he finds that comfort that he's looking for. That's the curse of the gifted, I like to say. That's the curse of the gifted. Like, when you try to outdo yourself to the point, like, you're going crazy trying to make it better than your lad, you know, I wanted to hit. I wanted to affect the culture the way I wanted to. As an artist, he addresses and approaches records in different ways, and that's what separates him from, um, you know, a lot of his class. He just always had that drive, man. Like, it, it, it sounds cliche, but he did, you know what I'm saying? And the people that do make it, you know what I'm saying? Like, they put their everything into it, and he, he did. I was, yeah, it's, a, it's intense. It's still because we come from some, some we come from separate worlds. We come from separate worlds, and, and it's like, you know, it's not like talking to Jay Z, like you're Jerry Seinfeld. Man, this is. This... Yeah, it's one world, man. <laughs> one world. Give me a specific idea of what you feel you want to get. So. Um... Um, no, it's it's natural though. It's it's natural. Like you know, that's that's one of the things that I I, I admire so much about the about the show and, and, and all your work. It's just mm -hmm. it's so reflective of real life. But if you want to use that stuff, or you want to sit, and we'll sit together and talk and. Well, I'm, I'm I'm very appreciative of that, and I can't yeah. wait to can't wait to work on it with you. No, no rapper ever asked me to do something like this, so this is interesting to me. All right, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you taking the time to call me. Oh, sure thing. I I'm looking forward to it. I love my job, and I would never complain about it. But it's a, it's intense. It's intense, especially like when you don't see us. I don't like look in the mirror and be like I'm this big star. Like I don't. Nah, I just. I'm just me. The one thing I always kept in mind is he's still a human being. And I think when you get into an industry like that and you get so big, people forget that. Even though he's Wale the rapper, he's still Vic the cousin. The cousins, it's like, we're deep. We're, we're deep as shit. It's like maybe like 20 of us. But was the oldest? I feel like him and Wale was like some of the glue that like hold the family together. They was tight. They was real tight, real, real tight. Nothing was ever gonna happen to us if Bo was around, you know what I'm saying? He was the protector. That was the big brother right there, man. I'm one of the few niggas that'll check Wale when he needs to be checked, you know what I'm saying? Bo was actually the right-hand man until uh, he got uh, he got married and stuff. You know, he got, uh, got a girl, whatever, they got married. And he had a kid or whatever, and then, of course, he, that's when he had his accident. R.P. That's like my brother. He died. That's why they cousin, you know what I'm saying, on a tragic accident on the turnpike. I was there when he got the news that he passed away, man, and, you know, he was really hurt about that, man, and it was, it was kind of hard, like, to see, like, you know, when your friends have to go through something like that. After any... Any experience like that is definitely going to change you. Somebody so close to you passing, so young especially, you know what I'm saying? It had a great effect on me. I had seen him weeks before, baby just born, you know what I'm saying? Like the whole scenario was just, it wasn't even real to me. Those be times like in the studio where like, he would just like step out. I don't know if anybody noticed, but like he would just like break down a little bit because he's like just thinking about it. Like it, it really did hurt because that's, that's our brother pretty much. He realized your life can be taken from you at any point, and life is too short, and you can't dwell on things and 
you can't consume everything and, you know, you have to enjoy life. I'm seeing him coming back to that full-blown lyricist that we all love, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Bo does have something to do with that, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad to see where he's at today, man. You know, I know my man Bo in heaven smiling. Something about her, probably can't live without her. Bowl of some sour, let me kiss on your fountain. Mission accomplished, you increasing your heart rate. And I won't ever rest, we meet at the peak of your mountain. Eager to show you, thinking that I should know you. Are you eager to work? Perfect, I can't employ you. Designer should spoil you. Rub you down with the oil to get on a higher tree. You won't have to climb a support. Hold on! Wale is an enigma of sorts when it comes to his artistry. I remember when he first came out, people were trying to figure out, well, what is he all about, MC from DC? I feel like this album, after hearing it today, is really your coming out album. This, this album has a very nostalgic undertone, and I wanted to pay homage to a lot of the greats and a lot of the great songs in hip hop history. I've been through a lot this year, and this is a special record I'm about to play right now. He's faced so many different adversities that he's overcome. He's had so many doubters and naysayers since day one because nobody really wanted to support a DC artist. For him to break out that city alone, it was just an incredible accomplishment. Just like any hip hop, like Atlanta, like Outkast, they were the first cats. You know what I'm saying? With the positive vibe, that shit, like Wale created that lane. He was the first nigga to do that. He just always accomplished what he wanted to do. He always set the expectation of what you thought he was going to do higher. He's a student of the game, so all the albums from the past that inspired him, he wanted to wrap all that into one. I don't think I've heard an artist, or a lot of artists, that can break down a song musically that it's relatable to a diverse number of people. I think Wale is on his way to that level of stardom. Wale makes hit records. Wale makes hit records. I mean, records that the culture can really appreciate. This shit is for us as people. Like, like motherfuckers just be rhyming the rhyme, man. I, I'm really be trying, like, just have my little messages in, inside, like, these records. The fuel to make this album was the great ones. Michael Jordan, fucking Lauryn Hill, fucking EU. You know, the first niggas to make it out of D.C., like, on that, with the go-go shit on the commercial level, that's the fuel for this album. Those are, these are the people that fueled it. And then, with, with that fuel, tell my story. You know what I'm saying? That's what the gift it is to me. I'm dreaming to own, but for now, me and my homie see the bottom float. I'm trying to redefine the culture, renovate the soul. Women in town, but I'm man up for state and there go. I see potential in John, talk to him once a week. Media targets in our city in this week. I lost a lot of friends, and they ain't even dead. When I was on my way up, why you ain't seen stairs? Lord Father, if I opted to follow them, my heart would tear for my dreams. Let me know that you had. And it's weird when I'm anywhere with too many heads. Niggas jealous to never tell it until they stare. How could you blame us, Envy? We do the same thing for a living, know the same niggas, but they all commend me. Champagne, I'ma spill it till we all fill up. Maybe it stop me from giving a fuck about opinions. I'm probably not, but I'm temporarily out of physics and tell the post-silly propaganda to politicians. Wow, wow, wow. Only time, only time. 